something that I encounter quite a bit out on the internet, at least recently, is this argument that um, it's a meant to be a counterpoint for the idea that homosexuality or that transgenderism or these things are unnatural. That is often spouted by, let's say, the religious right or just religious conservatives or political conservatives. Saying, they're saying that, that, that heteronormative relationships between men and women are the natural and that on the opposite side is the bisexual or the asexual, you know, the, the other categories, the LGBT categories, that those are unnatural. And in response to this, advocates on the other side, that LGBT side, will reference things like plants or insects, um, um, things like that, that reproduce in an asexual or a unisexual or a something like that, something that's outside the realm of a binary category. And um, it's problematic for me for multiple reasons, because what they're saying is that it's natural for, let's say, a snail that has both male and female genitalia or that um, or worms that have interchangeable genitalia or things like this that because those things are found in nature that if humans ex exhibit a similar behavior then that is also natural and it's problematic for me to go there rationally for a couple of reasons number one when you say something that is supposed to be natural it's not just found in nature, but you're saying that it is normative for that creature in that environment to behave in that manner. So for plants to seek out sunlight is natural, but a, let's say a mushroom that grows in darkness does not seek out sunlight. They're different. They're not even part of the same, like, order of creatures, right? And so it's normal, or it should be considered normal, that these two things do things in very dynamically different ways, right? Additionally, um, there's a lot of things that animals do that we have a moral um, offense towards, such as the lions, tigers, and bears, oh my, preying on the antelope and the elk and the caribou and the things like that, like just, and their violence towards one another on the plains, we would consider that barbaric in most instances. In fact, I mean, there's Cecil the lion and all these others where somebody hunting on a foreign continent gets someone's practice, um, uh, taken from them or they they get doxxed on the internet cancel culture comes after them right because we consider that behavior even though it's just the predator predator prey dynamic taken up to let's say 11 because you're using firearms and things because of the fact that somebody is doing the same thing we consider them to be a degenerate we consider them to be inferior morally. We consider them to be um, evolutionarily regressive on account of that behavior. So just because animals behave in a specific way does not give human beings a license to behave in that manner. Additionally, um, you're, the concept of consent between animals in a mating season just does not exist whether they're prey animals or predator animals they tend to take advantage of each other significantly and um, with human beings clearly there is a moral reprehense against that and there should be we should not tolerate that behavior among humans yet we have this weird grayness with this weird ambiguity in how we define these things. we What's happening is essentially nothing less than cherry picking. 
that when a specific animalistic detail is advantageous to an argumentative platform, you just take that and they'll use it, but they'll ignore everything else around it, even with that specific animal that's been sourced. Like, for instance, when a white cis male adopts a, or appropriates um, may, like predatory behavior, whether that's the wolf or the dog or things like that, predatory imagery or behavioral patterns, when he goes out with the boys, he's considered dis disgusting, degenerative. But if an LGBT advocate wants to reference um, planet, uh, plant biology as a reference point for the nature aspect or naturalness of one of those acronymic, well, abbreviations licensed to behave the way they do, suddenly it's perfectly acceptable. Like, there's just, there's no consistency present. And I think that that should set off some alarm bells with us, uh, that clearly either human beings are wholly distinct. They're unitary different from the rest of all the things else on this planet. And that involves moral and sexual and otherwise behavioral distinctions that make us and express that different from the rest of the things that live on this planet. Or we're the same. We are just another animal in which we give away that one little piece of high ground that would say that things like sexual assault, things like um, private property, things like, like, that things that we hold so, like, that we have these categories for, that that's what makes them important. That's the reason we fight for them. Like, um, even though, obviously, a group of baboons is called a Congress, they aren't levying taxes. They aren't attempting to establish policy, right? So, either we're different or we're not is what it really breaks down to. Either we are different or we're the same, in which if we are the same, then we should expect violence. We should expect assault. We should expect deviancy. We should expect those behaviors and maybe even we should respect them. But if we're different, that is the upstream. If we are different, we have a distinctive origin point, then we have grounds for saying, not only should we not respect those things, but we ought not expect them either. And we should do everything we can to um, prevent them as well.